Hi right, everyone, and here we are again. So the next video in this series of quick and dirty understanding of elements of design within composition, I'm gonna combine two just because it makes a little bit more sense because these two could be quite closely related. And that's um, irregular shapes or, or shapes generally, which could be irregular and use of them within composition to add interest. And also triangles. Um, you can use triangles in a variety of ways and actually triangles are one of the more popular things and the more you look at classic photographs, uh, especially the ones you enjoy, you'll start to spot whether you've got uh, a combination and relationships between triangles, whether they're conventional or they're inverted. And let's take a look and see if we can find some examples to show you exactly what that means. So let's take a look at shapes. Now shapes is actually a really tough one to show you. Um, and the reason for that is that it is one of the one of the elements of design i guess which is more open to interpretation than others sometimes it's obvious other times not so but the basic idea is that by considering how we how we create our composition when we make it through the viewfinder we might use um, elements in front of us or, or elements of a particular shape bring them into the frame to add interest to give the feeling of maybe balance or um, that things are uh, arranged in a particular order so that it just makes sense. Um, so it's tough to find examples. This is probably as good as one as any. Now the irregular shape is of course this sort of puddle on the beach. Um, but it's arranged in such a way that it's placed, you know, quite um, carefully within the frame and it forms... Uh, a strong um, anchor point within the image. As it, it's very obvious that that is a, a, a main feature of the image, but it also has a sense of place in a, in a broader environment. Um, but one of the important things about an, 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 an irregular shape or an implied shape or whatever is it usually has to be in contrast to the rest of the image. So that, what I mean by that, it's, it stands out. It, it's quite obvious. And I think you can see in this particular example how that is. Of course, the puddle is reflecting the sky, which gives it a much greater luminance than the area around it. So therefore, it's very, very firmly um, showing itself off in, the, in, in my composition. So that's an irregular shape. It doesn't have to be a particular shape, hence the name irregular, but it's in there and it's it's got a place. All right, as I said, this one's pretty tough to, to find examples of and describe, but there might be other days when, you know, you, you stumble over them all over. Um, I'm looking for, for other examples. No, not that one. Um, at a glance. It's, it's really tough and often I can show you an image which I've showed you before considering another aspect of um, like this one. You remember when I talked about the collection of points forms a shape between the points which is this oval. All right, So that is technically a shape which has been um, purposely put into by means of um, how we compose the, the photograph to, um, to produce that. I've just noticed. Um, I've left that from when I was showing you. I left that mark in, in the image, which I'm going to need to uh, uh, get rid of at some point. In fact, there's no time like the present. Let's just make sure we get rid of that because I will forget it otherwise. Oh, it's not letting me. There you go. Delete. And delete that. Sorry, went off piece there a little bit, but um, I'm one of those people, if I don't do it while it's on my mind, I'll totally forget. So, yeah, that gives you um, in a regular shape, the one that I've already showed you, that this one gives you more of an implied. Um, so what was it? Shapes and triangles. Can we find some? Yeah, of course, we can find examples of triangles in the use of composition. Let's look at this image when it finally arrives. Come on, computer. So, all right, a pretty standard image. I really don't like this one, um, but it's here for a purpose. This has got the triangles. So we've got a very obvious triangle here. In fact, we've got a triangle within a triangle. This also had a, a, a line and a horizontal and a vertical, which we talked about in a previous one. But the most, uh, the strongest shape in this is, of course, the triangles. Okay, triangles always work in composition, um, provided they're you know um, used with thought. But they usually work because they're a strong shape. They have a directional element to them, which 
uh, always works really well. And again, you know, the um, the dark hedges, you know, great, a very strong triangle going up through the middle there, uh, which is quite obvious. Less obvious ones, another image I've already shown uh, when I was talking about curves, you've got a triangle formed by the V here, which is directing us to the main um, protagonist in the photo, which has also happened to be a triangular shape. You seeing it now? Again, it's all about when you see it. Now, this is a tough one, as I've already kind of touched on, because this is one of the ones which you can look at and go, well, that's just coincidental. And, it, and to an extent it is. But here's the rub, here's the trick. A lot of it is subconscious. And once you have learned these, these approaches, learned these elements of design and they're, and they're embedded in your brain, it falls into the unconscious. It falls into your, let's call it your third eye. And so when you're composing and when you're looking, and this is not BS, and sometimes it's thought to have been BS, you put these things in there. And sometimes you don't notice them until later when you're editing or you're reviewing your own photographs. And you start to see, oh yeah, look, you know, there I did it again. It, it does happen naturally and it comes with practice, practice, practice. And that falls in. It's a bit like... Uh, when you when you're making uh, when you, you're setting up your camera and you, you, you're setting up your composition and like here you know how we've deliberately or I have deliberately placed this regular shape in here with room to breathe around it so it's not it's not hacking in on the edge too closely and, and making the image look awkward or unbalanced you know like that or or like this you know anything like that you know it clearly is um, oh, there's the original Wow. It clearly is something which is done on purpose. You can see there from the raw image. Um, but I don't really think about it because I've been doing it for so long. And that's the point of a lot of this. It's understanding. It's knowing how to read the photo, as I said in the last video, so you can write the photo. And once you start, like if you wrote a letter right now, you'd think about what you're writing, but you wouldn't think about what shape your letters are. You wouldn't think about putting spaces between each word, would you? That's automatic. That's happening. It's intuitive. And that's what we're getting at here. When you learn how to read and write photographs, then you will just intuitively start taking these measures and including these things in your design and in your composition. All right, so that's that was a tough one um, to do because we couldn't really find uh, very many examples of regular shapes because it, it is a tough one and triangles, but they are there. Uh, the more you look, the more you'll see. Sometimes it's a bit obvious. You know, It might be the particular shape of a feature. Oh, there's a triangle. You know, it's it's a pleasing shape. You know, if that was just a, a solid um, cliff going straight across horizontally across the frame and sky, it would look pretty boring, wouldn't it? There you go. Anyway, they're all quick and dirty, these. I hope you get the idea. I hope it helped. And you guys take care, and I hope you're all still healthy and um, keeping busy. And don't forget to go out for your walks and runs. All right? Take care now. Bye-bye.